On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're going back to Isla Morana in the Florida Keys. And joining me on this trip is a noted kayak fishing specialist heading offshore for the very first time. Woo! Andy, you gotta wear it out. You're wearing me out. <laughs> we're gonna be targeting everything from dolphin. Woo! <laughs> there we go. To sailfish. The big sailfish, D. That is awesome. Wait till you see this exciting episode. George Bofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Springtime in the Florida Keys is a period of transition. The winter game fish are slowly migrating away, and the offshore pelagics that are more common during the summertime are just starting to arrive. On this particular trip, I was going to do something very special. Dee Kaminsky is a noted kayak fishing specialist who fishes out of Melbourne, Florida, the central Florida region. She is a very accomplished kayak angler and does extremely well on snook, redfish, big sea trout, and even flounder. I'm a kayak fishing guide. I take out two to three people and teach them how to fish from a kayak. Sometimes it can turn into an eco tour, so I'm letting people enjoy the environment around them and they get to learn quite a bit about fishing and Florida ecosystem. The twist here, even though she lives in Florida, she has yet to experience the Florida Keys. When I was walking down the dock to George Povermo's boat, I was in awe at how big and beautiful this boat was. With our live wells loaded up, Dee and I left Worldwide Sportsman, a beautiful spring day in the Keys, throttled up the Mark 6, and just headed to the ocean. Well, we were finally on our way. Wind in the hair, it was beautiful. And my plan was to run offshore a good bit, try to find some scattered weeds, maybe some birds working, possibly some debris. Uh, we were all set to capitalize on any dolphin that we stumbled upon on our way offshore. It was a little bit on the sparse side as trying to find any kind of targets to shut down and work. We eventually ended up at the hump, the 409. Let me go ahead and make a couple live bait drifts over the hump and see if I can't put D on a blackfin tuna. Come on, Dee. You gotta wear it out. It's wearing me out. You're going down. <laughs> Still going down. So we're making some passes. You could see some fish marking on a sim rat. And I ended up hooking on a blackfin tuna, but I had no clue until I saw it coming up closer to the boat. How's it feeling? Is it trying to run on you? No. Turn the rod to the right a little bit. You want to steer him a little bit. Oh, it's running on you. What are you talking about? Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, he is. You're no kidding. Well, he was in a second. Ago. Well, this is what's going to happen. It's gonna, a fight like this, if it's a decent sized black one, it's going to take you 15, 20 minutes. So I'm trying to don't worry yourself out, Dee. Okay. <laughs> so Dee's up there winding his fish, keeping tight. And I know by how much that rod bent initially that it was a heavy fish in the end. <laughs> oh my God. Take your time and enjoy it. it it's, it's unlike what, the element that you come from where you have to horse a snook out of the mangroves. Yeah. Or red. Here, you're good. The, the only thing you need to worry about is a shark, but I think we're gonna be okay. Ugh. All right? George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, the official outboard of George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Simrad, and the new NSS Evo 3 display. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Kayak Pro D. Kaminsky is still locked in a heated battle with a tough Isla Mata Florida Keys game fish. Hey, this is the hardest fish I've fought ever. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad it's on the Mark 6. Yeah. You got a hard fish, D. I had to use my abs, I had to use my arms, and then I had to use my legs for pressure, which is completely different than sitting in a kayak and having a fish just try to run away from you. Still going. I like to tell people, you gotta bait down 200 feet, 250 feet, eat this one. This is when oh, you realize you how long a distance 200 to 250 feet right? is. Sinker's almost within arm's reach for me. I keep coming up. Okay. 
just to see what you had. People, uh, oh, you're good, you're good. Just take your time, wind down now, wind, wind, wind. Oh, it's a big black thing, take your time. Keep winding, wind, wind. Ah. Dee, look at that freaking black thing you just voted, girl. Oh my God! Walk down here with me, come down here. It's <laughs> That is a trophy blackfin tuna. Holy! Let me get rid of this gap before oh somebody gets God. hurt. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Ah. D, <laughs> come on now. This is a trophy blackfin oh tuna. God. Beautiful job on it. Oh too. my God! Thanks, George. Oh my God! <laughs> to me, huge is 45 inches of redfish, maybe 50, and this was probably just that but it was a lot heavier and a lot harder to fight than a, a bull redfish. 21 pounds, we just weighed him up, a little over 21 pounds. 21 pounds. Can I put him down now, he's happy. <laughs> You're supposed to be all happy. This is your biggest fish so far, right? Uh, it is, well, it's my biggest offshore fish. That's what I'm gonna say. A lot of things to do when you're not fishing in Isla Mirada, and one of them, and I was glad to catch up with it again, was an old friend going back to Broward County, Roberto Pasta Pantaleo. Pasta, you've been around quite a while. Give me a, an example of what you're specializing in today. Coastal marine lifestyle art. Made Isla Mirada my home, and uh, coastal lifestyle is the, kind of the way I paint, and I started putting a little bit more art value into the paintings and a little bit of the Monet spins or a little Leo and Neiman spins in the world. Now you're, you're based here at your gallery yeah. in Isla Mirada, what, Mirada Way? Yeah, downtown Isla Mirada. We're the, uh, we're the uh, cornerstone of the art and culture district. I was the founding president of that about six and a half years ago. We kicked that off. We have an art walk every month, every 30 days we have an art walk on a third Thursday. We're very well known. People really look forward to it once a month and that's what we wanted to brand. We didn't want to cut it down in the off season for that reason. Well, as always, a, a pleasure catching up to you, and yeah. your work just simply amazing. Thank you very much, George. You. Good seeing you, man. Super appreciate it. Pines and Palms Resort in Isla Mirada. What more could I say? It's my home away from home. When I'm in Isla Mirada, I stay here, and for very good reason. When you first come off the highway, you could see it on your left, the big sign, Pines and Palms. It's on five acres. Once you turn into Pines and Palms, it's an entirely different scene. It's like you're on this tropical, lush island. It takes you back to old Florida, the way it used to be, but just heavily landscaped grounds, uh, beach sand throughout. The accommodations uh, range from one bedroom, two bedroom, to three bedroom units, and every unit has a stove. And even more, if you want to go ahead and grill your fish, they'll bring a grill to your room as well, so you can sit right out on the patio there and just enjoy yourself. It's an incredibly landscaped uh, area. If you want to take it easy a little bit, or the family wants to take it easy, there's a nice white sand beach here. All in all, Pines and Palms is a perfect all-around place, and the reason I've been coming back here for decades. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Rapala. Your best shot at a world record. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. We'll be right back. We're back in Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. I'm fishing with noted kayak angler Dee Kaminsky, and the catching is just heating up. So we did several more drifts, and... This spot turned out to be pretty decent. Um, first rod, the shallow one, goes down. Uh, D's on it and she's fighting this fish and comes up fairly easy and we looked down there and it turned out it was a shark. He had to come all the way to the uh, Isle of Broad to get a shark. And about the time that I was gonna try to unhook this shark, the deep rod, the deeper one, goes off and this thing is smoking. I'm gonna get this one for now. You hang on to that one. <laughs> so we're trying to decide how we want to remove the shark. All of a sudden the other rod doubles over. So George says, here, I'll take the shark and you take this rod and fight this fish. He's gonna run on that one. Okay, that's cool. Let him do his thing. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna clear the bow line too. You doing all right with him? Yep, yep, yep. So Dee's really into a, a, a tough fight now again. So here she is now experiencing a fish that's not only really running horizontal, but also okay. down. Here he comes. Man, is it a big amberjack, too. Hang on, I've got my gloves for this, Dee. Just to see Dee's 
facial expressions was, was worth the trip to me, too. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> when I saw that, I was just like amazed. Tuna was, you know, 21 pounds or something, and this thing was even bigger. I was just thrilled to death. Oh my God! Well, tell me about that fight, huh? Oh, now that's even a bigger fish. Whoa! All right, now give me a little oh slack line. God. So not only did she knock off a big black fin on her bucket list, but right now a big amberjack, and um, she basically survived what could be one of the toughest offshore fights she'll ever ever encounter. Oh my God! There he goes. Oh, bye. Thank you for playing. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. When you're fighting big game fish, be it on spin tackle or conventional tackle, or even dropping down the bottom fish or deep jig, the cushion is a unique device that slips over the rod butt. And what that does, it takes the place of a rod fighting belt. It's easy to go on and off. Somebody hooks up with a fish, simply grab the unit, slip on the a rod buds. It cushions the butt of a rod so that the angler can get away without using a rod belt. How it works is a very soft foam-like apparatus that you could place around your abdomen area and actually apply pressure and fight the fish and not worry about the rod butt doing any kind of damage to you or leaving any kind of marks. And because the base of it actually bends, it gives you some extra leverage as you're starting to pump and wind and fight a fish. In addition to the cushets, which come in four sizes, they also have a leader mate, which is incredible if you do a lot of bottom fishing, like we do in South Florida for mutton snappers, where you're using leaders 15 to 30 feet long. The device clips onto a rod, and you actually put your hook and wind your leader around it and stuff the sinker in its own little compartment. It keeps the whole entire rig organized and handy until it's time to unwind the leader, bait, and drop a bait down for your groupers or your snappers. In addition, it accommodates flutter style jigs. We've always wondered how do you keep these flutter jigs from banging against the rods when you're running to them from the fishing grounds. The leader mate takes care of that. Any kind of long leader systems, sinker rigs, etc., and even trolling lures, you can wrap up and keep ready to go at a moment's notice because of this. And what I like about this too is when you put them under the gunnels, they actually act as a cushion to keep the rods from banging against the gunnel. Two great products from Lunacy Sports. Mercury Performance Stats Isla Morata. Seas 2 to 3 feet. Power Triple Mercury Verado 350 horsepower. Average RPMs 4,000. Total miles 120. Total fuel burn 112 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Proudly brought to you by Starbright Professional Grade Boat Care Products. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. We're back to Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys, and Deacon Minsky and I are about to switch it up and go on the troll. We made a couple more drifts along the hump, so I said, you know what? Let's start running back in shore a little bit more, keep our eyes open for weeds, any kind of floating debris, working birds. So George says it's time to do some trolling. Maybe we can get some dolphin that way. But we ended up having uh, to clean off some seaweed off of the baits. As we're pulling it in to clean it off, it looked like there was something on the end of it. And George goes, there's a dolphin on the end of there. A any followers? I'm looking. Look at the thrashing, D. I uh, you want to take a step or two back, and I'll take the leader. Hold on. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Woo! So we re-rigged after the third gorgeous dolphin, and this is when all hell broke loose. The outrigger comes down, but there's an explosion out there. I caught that in the corner of my eye. This big thing comes flying through the air, and George says, did you see that? I look back and I see this huge sailfish tail walking. I'm holding the rod and this thing is just taking line, just taking line. And George actually had to slow the boat down and start going back in reverse so I could at least start gaining on it. A big sailfish, D. That is awesome. And I just need you to talk to me in the fight. If I want to back it up, I want you to keep tight. Let's go get this thing, okay? 
All right, here we go. Ready? Ready. Now, as I back, you gain. Okay, so we're going to be like the amberjack, but we're on the surface now. Okay? Right. How you doing, D? Doing awesome. And keep winding. Remember, level wind's critical. With your thumb, move it back and forth so it doesn't fall up and one in the spool. See if I can... Now he's taking line. Let him take line. That's what you want me to jump out here somewhere, I bet you. But I'm going to come... He's going to take off. Watch him. You just keep tight. <laughs> I saw the size of that fish. And I figured, poor D. <laughs> She's got her work cut out. But come on, this is what I wanted to catch her, the sailfish. This would just top off the entire trip. D, let's go for it. I'm coaching D. I happen to glance around, and I see another sailfish 20 feet away from the Mark 6, looking for something to eat. There's the dorsal fin up. There's the bill. Here's the sailfish, curious. I'm going to nail this fish. Then I thought about it. George, D needs your utmost and undivided attention here. So that sailfish teased us for probably a good solid five to eight minutes. Finally got bored. We weren't feeding it and swam away. Uh, he's gonna, that's, gonna, that's him running, right? Yeah. Good, maybe he'll come in and talk. So I'm fighting this sailfish and that's all I can pay attention to. I'm just looking at the rod tip, so I'm up here, and then I gain on it, and I'm going down. Um, coaching time began. <laughs> this is a big one. It was just me and her, and we had to get this fish. It was an amazing fight. I couldn't find the right position for the rod to sit on my belly or between my legs, and I actually just ended up resorting sitting down on a cooler. You want me to push the cooler forward? Help no, it? no. That's you sure? Because yeah. I can give you some more leg room, if, or, I mean, more squat. Squatting room? Yeah. You want that? Nah. I think this will work fine. I said, D, this is it. This is the end stage. You broke the fish's spirit. It's up near the surface again. It's all yours. I said, just wind the leader to the rod tip. At that point, you will have had a legal release. Here's your sailfish, D. Here it is. Look, take a good look. Oh my God! Got your sail, D. Oh my God! Oh! Let's get this out of there. Here's your lure. Take that out of the way. Oh, unbelievable. All right, you reach down and get him under his belly for one quick. Let's see, get an eye that ties it still. Put your arm under here, right? Go on, D. All right. D, Kaminsky Kayak Queen. So D had her first sailfish and a monster sailfish at that. I had this fish under control, built alongside the boat. And I said, D, just put one motor in gear, you know, with the autopilot on, let's try to get some water, you know, going across this fish to get ready to release it. Put the gloves on, I want you to build your sailfish. Now, keep him off the boat. All right, now you hold him. And when I tell you to let him go, you let him go. We were getting water through its gills and did a beautiful, successful release of the sailfish. And on 3D, we're gonna let him go, okay? One, two, three. And here he goes, swoon away. Look at that. Congratulations, you did an awesome job. Oh my God, that was crazy. And a, and a big sailfish at that. Yeah. It worked you. That was crazy. Wow. Uh, ah. Uh, I didn't think we were ever gonna land that fish. And what a spectacular way to, to really wrap up some offshore fishing. And uh, she got to fly the sailfish release flag and the Mark 6 outrigger. So we got our sailfish and uh, the flag is up in the air and it's time to head back. And George says, you know, it's customary that when you catch your first billfish, you are supposed to get dunked in the water. But I warned Dee. And I could tell that that was just a real, no debatable no. Anyway, we worked it out. Instead of her dunking to celebrate, uh, we were gonna take her to Ziggy and Mad Dog. So she definitely got the better deal out of that and she stayed dry. So of all the shows I've done in Isla Mirada, and all the times I've eaten here at Ziggy and Mad Dogs, I've said just about every kind of description imaginable about how good this place is. So to do something different, why don't we turn it over to the chef? I think what's, uh, what's made Ziggy so popular now is good quality ingredients have been treated simply and uh, you know, welcoming an atmosphere with people that you know, uh, you know responding to you know, more individual needs. We, um, we love the American Steakhouse model, everything being a la carte, 
in almost a butcher shop feel to where you pick your protein, you get it cooked for you here. What separates us is we're honest about what we do and uh, you know, you pay a penny here but you get what you pay for. We're going to try to maintain that by not changing a model that's worked since Delmonico's was popular at the turn of the century and I think that's what's worked for us. Island Rod and the Florida Keys, this trip certainly didn't disappoint. I had a lot on my shoulders on this one because I had promised Dee Kaminsky to experience the Florida Keys, you know, my world basically out here. Take her out of her element into the Florida Keys for the first time. Take her offshore and knock off a bunch of fish off her bucket list. I'll tell you, this trip with George was a dream come true. I got to go on a great big boat. I got to the Keys. I still feel like it's a dream. I mean, it's just just great. I can't wait to go back again. The kid around with her and say, Dee, there really is life beyond two feet of water. And I think she realized that. And I was proud of her to come out and hang in there and experience it and do the job that she did. And that just bodes well for her and it shows you that she is definitely without a doubt an experienced angler and has it in her. And she adapted quite rapidly to the offshore scene. One heck of a trip. Stay in touch with George. Visit georgepoveromo.com. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. On Instagram, at georgepoveromo. YouTube, georgepoveromo TV. And on mobile devices, Waypoint TV.